as long as we fix some of these problems. And move it forward. I want to bring into the conversation Congressman Hanson Clark. Thanks so much for joining uh, us. We appreciate it. Great to be in here. So Good we're talking here. about Detroit. You've jumped into exactly the right conversation because uh, you have a pipeline perhaps of some federal money. You have talked about the possibility of trying to get some kind of federal funding for Detroit. Where are you with that? Or, and what kind of possibilities are even out there? Well, the possibilities are good that we'll get investment back to Detroit because Detroit is so important, not only to this region, but for the country. Now, even though Detroit has gone through some tough times, we have some great assets. We have the business international border crossing in North America. We've got the manufacturing know-how to build and design the best products, create the best technologies. We have a lot of vacant land that's cheap to buy and, and develop, and we have great research universities. So Congress understands the value of investing in Detroit. Uh, my immediate uh, effort right now is to secure federal funding for the M1 rail. That's the light rail project that will go down Woodward Avenue. I think that's so important for many reasons. Uh, that rail system could help anchor a regional development, a regional transit system that's needed in our region. And also, too, it'll help leverage the investment that's already been made in Detroit uh, in, uh, higher, in higher education, in our healthcare systems, in manufacturing, technology, and in financial services. So yes, uh, Congress, my mission in Congress was to promote the value of investing in Detroit and to encourage Congress to see that rebuilding Detroit is really key to rebuilding the U.S. economy. Yes. Neat thing about Mackinac, again, where you can kind of just turn around and bump into anybody. So oh, how absolutely. often is it that you guys get to sit together and well, have a conversation we, about uh, yeah. what, what, <laughs> lots of times about we that yeah. together. Um, you know, Gary's done great leadership in terms of training our veterans, and that's what I'm doing right now. As yes. a matter of fact, um, I, I've been able to get bipartisan legislation enacted that I believe the governor's office will use now to help put unemployed veterans back to work. I was able to amend the law to encourage employers to hire the unemployed who are receiving unemployment benefits and put them to work without losing their unemployment. As a matter of fact, pay them more money while they get on the job training. I want to steer back a little bit towards crime. Sure. And we talked a little bit about Detroit and the, and the issue um, of crime and talking about getting more officers on the streets. Right now, they're going through a process of maybe not turning the lights on in certain neighborhoods, certain pocket neighborhoods that they are not going to try to revitalize. How concerning is that to you, knowing obviously that there are not enough resources to make sure that the entire city is blanketed with the services, yeah. but that you're going to have start to have these pocket neighborhoods that are going to be in the dark? And then is that just an entree for for crime to, to come in. Yeah, well, well certainly not having lights is, is not a good thing, but we've got to hear more of the details. And Detroiters, the people that live in the city of Detroit, have to be able to weigh in on this particular issue on where the lights will be and where they won't be. We all understand that uh, we're, we're uh, you know, we, we've got to cut cost. Um, but if you're talking about turning out lights, you better get some buy-in from the citizens of the city of Detroit that are going to be actually living in the dark before you implement the program. So we've got to hear a lot more about the details of that program before it's ever it ever gets implemented. Can, Hans, have any constituents talk to you about uh, you reshaping the city and, and you know where neighborhoods might end up being at all? Oh my goodness, people in neighborhoods are very concerned about the lights being shut off because right now, yeah. many times 40% of the street lights are already out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we're actually gonna turn off more lights, I mean, that's just gonna breed crime. And, and my point is this, in order for Detroit to attract the jobs and investment back that will create jobs throughout the region and the country, we've gotta have safe streets, number one. So getting the street lights on, getting our young people off the street, in the school, learning how to read, building their confidence, creating a culture of education in the city where the parents support the children and expect that they learn. Those are all critical in making our streets absolutely. safer. We've got to do that. Yeah, Number yeah. one priority. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, he, he, Hanson's absolutely right. I mean, he said both of them. One, crime. We've got to have a safe city. No one's going to move in. No one's going to stay in a city that's not perceived mm -hmm. to be safe. And uh, you know, and I think it, we've talked about a lot of businesses who are bringing their yep. employees down there and yes. they're moving in and then there's a huge investment on the business and the in business community yes. to do that. Right. But dot, dot, dot. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, you got to educate kids. 
You're not going to get young people to come into the city of Detroit and stay. They won't stay young forever. They'll get married. They'll have kids. You must be able to educate kids. We keep talking about these kids that go away to college, get educated, and then go to New York or some other city. What about the kids that don't get educated and stay in the city of Correct. Detroit? That's a bigger problem than the ones that are leaving. And so we've got to fix it. We've got to have. We've got to fix the public safety issue. We've got to fix the education issue in the city of Detroit. And then thirdly, we've got to provide an acceptable level of core services. Police, fire, EMS, pick up the garbage, and lighting are core services. All right, I've got to get to politics real quick while I have you two here. <laughs> and I've just got just a couple of moments left. You're fighting for your seat. Um, what has it been like for the, this first term in Congress? No, let, me, let me say this. I'm not fighting for this seat. This seat belongs to the people of this region. I'm fighting for them. And then I ask them to choose me to rehire me for two more years based on my work. See, that's what I'm trying to change in politics. Too much. Politics has been viewed as a contest between politicians. It should be, be about how do we effectively serve the people with the tax dollars that they yeah. pay. And so have no. you effectively served the people you believe in yes, your first term? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and are you running for the mayor of city of oh, Detroit? Oh, absolutely not. I have no intention <laughs> of doing anything other than running for, uh, you know, my job on Detroit City Council for this four years. I have no <laughs> ambitions to run for the All right, for well, the you know, office. we just had to get some of these things <laughs> on the record. You know, girls got to ask, That's right? right? That's right. Detroit City Councilman Gary Brown, Congressman Hanson Clark. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so You're much for being with you. us. We Thank really appreciate it. Me. And um, if you find out any more information in the next couple of days, things that we need to know about yes. in our audience across the state <laughs> on PBS, everybody. we'd love we'll for you to come back and yeah, share it. We will. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank and you, you are much. watching live coverage of My Vote Mackinac. Stay with us.